Welcome to the second section of the course, Resolving and Rejecting ES6 Promises. In the first section, we spoke about Angular promises. But promises have become such a popular feature that the new iteration of JavaScript, ES6, implements the Promise API. Of course, since ES6 is not completely rolled out yet, not all browsers support this API. So please make sure to use Google Chrome during this section. So in this section, we will first look at how to create ES6 promises, which is very similar to the Angular way. We will talk about the two possible outcomes of a promise, which are either success, which we call resolve, or failure, which we call reject. This will lead to deciding what to do once the promise is settled by adding callbacks to the promise. And we will see the characteristics of the resolution of a promise, namely that it is a single chance and single value process. We will talk more about the execution of callbacks added for success and failure. And finally, we will have a very brief look into the proposed Angular 2 Promise API. The first video is creating ES6 promises. In this video, we will first take a look at ES6 promises, whereas so far we had used Angular promises. But you will see that they are very similar. We will use the so-called executor function to build our own promise and learn how to complete the promise with either the success or failure function. As an example, we will make the browser talk and display a message when the speech is over. Let's open our index.html file and refer to the div I'm highlighting. You can see that we created a box for the widget and an input where you will be able to type the text you want spoken out. There's also a span element here, which will show a status. To avoid having an extra button, we will just listen to the blur event on the input. For convenience purposes, we gave each of those elements an ID, so we can select them easily later. Note that this time we did not define an Angular controller because we are going to code this in plain JavaScript without using Angular. For this example, we are going to use the Speech Synthesis API, so once again, please use Google Chrome. For those who do not wish to use Chrome, I will type an alternative example where we simply wait for a random amount of time. Now let's move to the JavaScript side app.js. The first thing we need to do is to set the listener on the input. That needs to be wrapped in a DOM content loaded event, just as you would usually do a $document.ready in jQuery. So document dot add event listener dom content loaded, and we're going to first assign the two dom elements we care about to a variable. Conveniently, they each have an ID. So var input equals document dot get element by ID. Say what? And then the same for the output span element. On the input, we are going to add an event listener for blur, and that will trigger this here callback. Let's add a console the debug inside that callback, just so that we can see the flow of things later on. Now comes the part where we're going to use promises. So let's create our ES6 promise by typing var speaking is equal to new promise. And as an argument, that constructor takes a function which we call an executor. That function itself receives two arguments, which for now I will call success and failure. Those arguments themselves are functions, which we can execute to signal the end of the process. The executor function does not need to be named executor. Any name or even an anonymous function would be fine. The executor function is roughly the equivalent of Angular's deferred object, which, as you remember, represents the action itself. So we will be running the actual process from within that executor function. In our widget, it means first creating a speech synthesis utterance object, which is basically a message with the value of our current input as the actual text to be spoken. And next, we will add the speech synthesis API to speak the message out. At this stage, we have not yet told the promise when it is settled or done. We saw in the first section how to transform the geolocation service to use promises. Geolocation was originally callback based. Remember that get current position took a callback. Now the speech synthesis API is not callback based, it is event based. And by the way, there you have the three common ways of handling asynchronous processes, events, callbacks, and promises. 
we will look at advantages of each one in section 5. But back to the speech widget. We need to listen to the end event of the message object. So message.onEnd equals to a function, and in that function we will acknowledge that our speaking process is complete by executing the success function that we received in the executor. The onEnd function receives an event as parameter, so let's pass that along as well to represent the result of the process. If you decided not to use Chrome and the Speech Synthesis API is unavailable, you can replace the actions in the executor function by waiting a random amount of time. Let's create a random amount of time between 0 and 2 seconds, so math.random times 10,000 since JavaScript timeouts take milliseconds. Then set timeout function and we trigger the success function. And in order to match the event we get from the speech synthesis, I'll just give an object with elapsed time, colon, and then the duration. We trigger that function after the random amount of time, duration. All right, so even if you don't have the speech synthesis API, you'll be able to see this example work. Let me revert to the speech code. So now we have a promise object which will be created by the executor function, and after a certain amount of time, the executor will acknowledge that the promise is complete or settled. So now we need to handle that outcome. In the same way as Angular promises do, the ES6 promise has a dot then method, which takes a callback, and that callback will receive one argument, the one that we passed to the success here. So what do we do with that? Well, in the output span element, we're simply going to display a message, speech completed in, and we'll use the events elapse time value to complete the message. Let's also add a console debug of the event object so we can see things happening clearly. And a final touch, outside of the executor, we'll write speaking in the output span so that while the process is going on, it will display that on screen. All right, let's now have a look at our widget in the browser. Open the developer console so you can see those debugging logs. Type something nice into the box here and you will hear it spoken out as soon as you exit the input box. The status text changes to speaking and when done, it changes to the message we had created. Note that the number of seconds is a bit messed up here because this API is still very much in the development phase. Now before we complete this video, allow me to just discuss a coding style thing here. If you go back to app.js and look at the on end part, we are creating an anonymous function which receives an event, and then we are simply calling the success function with the exact same argument. Now in JavaScript functions are first class objects, so they are exactly like other variables. And we can do without the anonymous function and simply write message dot on end equals success. There's no need for brackets as the success callback will be called only when the speech ends. This is considered cleaner and works to the same effect. It is okay, however, if you are more comfortable with creating the anonymous function. So in this video, we learned about ES6 promises and we created one such promise to handle an asynchronous process. In the executor function, there were two functions, success and failure, but we only used one. So in the next video, we will learn how to use the second one and we will discuss the only two outcomes that any promise can have, resolved or rejected, and how this affects coding with promises.